All right, so in this last video, I want to talk about alpha decay. This is a different process. Um, it turns out that uh, it's it, this is um, uh, the uh, not actually having to do with electrons being released, um, and not even actually having to do with a um, with a, a weak interaction. Uh, this is actually something uh, that actually is caused by just the removal of a helium atom. Um, and so, in an alpha decay, you basically have a um, an initial oh, nucleus, and what happens is is it actually loses two protons and two neutrons which means that Z goes down by two, and uh, the total A goes down by four, because uh, there are also two neutrons, and then you also emit a helium atom, a 4-2 four, uh, four helium, so uh, uh, two protons and two neutrons. All right, um, and this is actually a helium two plus, All right, so that's, that's actually what you, what you end up getting rid of. Um, Again, we can do the exact same thing that we did in the other uh, cases where we can say, okay, um, for it, for this to happen again, the mass needs to get smaller. So the mass initial has to be greater than the mass final plus the mass, and this is of the, this is of the nucleus of the nucleus, plus um, the mass uh, of a helium nucleus. All right, a helium, a helium, uh, Two, four nucleus. Um, again, we can just do the same thing that we've been doing uh, everywhere, which is we can just add um, Z times the mass of electrons, Z times the mass of electrons. And what we're going to do is we're do, going to just distribute the, uh, so this on this side, this is just the mass initial of the atom now. And then on the right side, we're just going to distribute uh, Z minus two of these electrons to the, to the final uh, nucleus. And we're going to do two of the electrons to the helium nucleus. And so then you're just going to get that this has to be greater than the mass final plus the mass of the helium, of a helium atom, a helium 2,4 atom. And again, that is what will allow uh, you to have uh, alpha decay. Uh, and again, um, what you'll see is you actually see a helium atom come flying out or helium nucleus come flying out. Uh, one of the things that you could ask is why a helium nucleus uh, I would recommend going actually to your um, uh, to your uh, your book about this but the short answer is is that um, the binding energy per nucleon is greatest for a helium nucleus um, and so and so by emitting a helium nucleus the thing that atom can actually get rid of uh, as much energy as possible uh, in in one event um, and so that's the basic reason why it does it. This only happens, by the way, to large atoms uh, or large nuclei. Uh, Thomas More has a, about a two-page derivation on pages 224 and 225 showing why that is, uh, but I'm not going to go through that. Last thing I just want to put here at the end is something called gamma decay. Um, gamma, uh, 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 gamma decay just has to do with the fact that whenever you emit um, a... Uh, so whenever you have one of these decay processes happening... Uh, let's say you have neutron decay happen, um, and it happens from the middle one of the from one of the middle neutrons. Let's say so. There's protons. There's neutrons. Let's say this one goes away and turns into a you know something else, whatever. Um, you'll notice that there's still a, a particle up here. Well, this one can now fall down to this lower energy. That won't cause any difference in particles. But what it will do is it'll emit a photon because it has to get rid of that energy. And that is called gamma, gamma decay. This is where gamma rays come from. They're basically electromagnetic radiation that are very, very high energy. And they just have to do with the energy difference between the energy levels of uh, the, the, um, the places where uh, the protons and neutrons are falling down to uh, whenever they decay. And that's all I've got, uh, so I hope that was useful.